Chapter 1, an Introduction to Earth Science. What is Earth Science? Earth Science includes all disciplines of science that strive to understand the Earth. These disciplines include geology, which literally is the study of the Earth, oceanography, a study of the ocean, meteorology, the study of the atmosphere and processes that produce weather, and astronomy, the study of the universe. In geology, we look at two major subfields, physical geology, which study the materials and processes that make up the constantly changing Earth, and historical geology, the study of the chronological sequence of events and changes that have occurred during the 4.6 billion year history of this planet. In oceanography, well, oceanography is a combination of sciences, just like Earth science. In this case, chemistry, physics, geology, and biology make up oceanography. Oceanography focuses on the composition of seawater, movement of seawater, coastal processes, seafloor topography, and marine life. Meteorology looks at weather processes and the atmosphere. Astronomy is study of the universe, origins of the Earth, and interaction of the Earth with the objects in space, such as the moon and sun. Now, people and the environment have a relationship. Natural processes it can cause natural disasters, such as hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, and tsunamis. Okay? These events can negatively impact people. Resources are important to, sur for, to human survival and are the result of the natural processes of the environment. More people live in cities than rural areas, and that puts pressures on certain areas in the world in which, such as urbanization, because of population in urban areas, cause something called urbanization, which is flooding, which is that flooding becomes more frequent and larger. Also, all the greenhouse gases that we add into the atmosphere can impact climate change and sea level rise. Now, how do we go about doing science in order to understand about our Earth? We use something, a method called scientific inquiry. Okay? Science is based on the assumption that nature acts in a constant and predictable manner. The scientific process is a systematic way to increase our knowledge. The scientific method. This starts by gathering facts and observations, develops research questions, which are hypotheses, and then we test those hypotheses, and eventually some of those hypotheses may become theory. Okay, hypothesis is a tentative or untested explanation. You can have more than one hypothesis in your research study. Okay. You can undergo testing through observ additional observations to see if this, op this hypothesis seems to hold true or it fails. Failed hypotheses are rejected. After extensive testing and universally accepted hypotheses become theories. One example is plate tectonics theory. This explains the origin of mountains, earthquakes, volcanoes, continents, and ocean basins. So a scientific method, so you start with a research question, data is collected, hypotheses are developed, observations and experiments are developed to test the hypotheses. These hypotheses are accepted or rejected, and then you share the results within the scientific community. Okay. Now as we're studying Earth, we're going to look at things at various, various scales of space. Okay. We're going to look and talk about things so small that on one end of the spectrum are atoms, very, very tiny. And the other end of the spectrum, we're going to talk about galaxies, which are very, very large. The scale of time on Earth. Some events happen so fast, they're fractions of a second, like a lightning bolt. Some things move very, very slow over long periods of time. And the geologic time scale covers millions and billions of years. One important theory is nebular theory. This theory discusses how the Earth evolved. It started with a nebula that was a cloud of dust and gas, and it started to contract into a rotating disk, causing heating. Gradual cooling caused solids to form, and denser materials stayed in the center of this disk, and materials spread out by density to lighter weight materials were out in the outer, outer rings. And then these particles in each of these bands started to bump into each other and form asteroids, bump into each other, later form planets, and eventually, eventually, this dust cloud becomes our solar system. 
Earth and space. This is very important. Once we're able to go up into space and look back at the Earth and start looking at things at regional and global levels, we're able to understand things better. We're able to solve bigger problems. Along with computers getting stronger and faster and more memory, we're now able to not just do local simulations, even regional simulations, we can do global computer modeling, such as climate models. In our science, we break up the Earth into four spheres, okay? and these four spheres interact. So we break the, the Earth spheres, so the Earth into spheres of atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, and geosphere. The atmosphere is a thin layer of gases held in place by gravity. The Earth's rotation and sun's energy causes changes in the atmosphere and drive weather and weather patterns. The hydrosphere, that includes all the water on and in and above the Earth. 97.2% of all the water is in the oceans. Only 2.8% is fresh water. But that fresh, of that fresh water, 2.15% of that 2.8%. So, so most of that 2.8% is locked up in ice and glaciers. And then about a quarter of that is in groundwater and a very small, tiny bit of fresh water is in our lakes, our streams, and our rivers. The biosphere encompasses all life. Sunlit portions of the ocean where there's life, land mostly on the surface to a few meters below the ground, and also some life lives in extremely inhospitable locations such as the ocean floor, in rock four kilometers into the earth, and boiling hot springs. The geosphere includes a solid earth Earth's crust, including the continental crust and the oceanic crust. Earth's mantle, which is its solid rocky shell. Its upper mantle, including the lithosphere and the stenosphere. The lower mantle, Earth's core, inner and outer cores. There's a picture of Earth's geosphere, where we see the different layers of the Earth. And we'll discuss this later in a, in a future, cha future chapter. Also the Earth is broken up into these large tectonic plates that are slowly shifting. And you notice that on these plates, a large portion is continental landmass and a large portion is oceanic crust. The face of the Earth not just has tectonic plates, but within those tectonic plates are continents. And on those continents we find mountain belts, such as these yellow, young, tall mountains like the Himalayan Mountains. Uh, these old, these purple mountains are old mountain ranges like the Appalachian Mountains and the Caledonian Belt. And then also these shield, stable interior shields like the Canadian Shield. Now the ocean floor on the face of the Earth includes the continental margins, the continental shelf, the continental slope. Deep ocean basins include abyssal plains and deep ocean trenches. And the ocean ridges which form the largest linear feature on the face of the Earth. Like you see these white ocean ridges in the ocean here. Now we look at Earth as a system where it has different parts that interact. Kind of like a car has, has engine, has a, in the engine. So we have an air cooling, we have a cooling system, we have a fuel pump system, and these systems have to work together to make a, a moving car. Well, in case of the Earth, the hydrosphere needs to interact with the hydrosphere, needs to interact with the geosphere and the biosphere. And the same with all the other spheres, they have to interact with all the others. This needs, necessitates an interdisciplinary approach to studying the Earth. It's called system science. So, so the Earth's, how these Earth spheres interact is by transferring energy and matter. 